Morning folks. Well, here we are. You, me, Bo, and this broken down turd pusher machine. It's quite the contraption, and I guess what it's used for is uh, pushing turds down a sewer line. It's kind of like a giant pressure washer machine. Uh, looks like we're dealing with a crappy Kohler Command 20 engine. I haven't done one of these before. Uh, it looks like the carburetor is actually mounted on top of the engine. I think I'll have to take off this gas tank to get easy access into there. This machine was in storage for about five years. Um, first thing I had to do was put a battery in it. Now it turns over and it will start if I spray starting fluid into the air filter area, uh, but it stops running uh, after that. Since it's been sitting for so long, I'm pretty sure that the carburetor is going to need to be cleaned out and rebuilt. So let's get started. Looks like there's a three or four 3 8 bolts holding this tank on. Should be easy to take off. Should be being the key phrase there. I think I'm going to disconnect it down here just because it's pretty stiff up here and I don't want to break this little valve. There we go. Much easier to get to. Now we can get you guys a good look at this, hopefully. Well, I've already had this off. <clears throat> Spraying starting fluid in there, which, as I said, it will run with starting fluid, but then dies. And the air filter's in good shape. These look like eight millimeter bolts. It sure is nice using that power drill for this. Alright, you guys help me remember how this goes when we put it back together, alright? Oop, looks like one of these is a short bolt. Uh, two of these are short bolts. Where'd those come from? Oh yeah, those were the ones right here. Alright, something's still attached. Oh, there we go. It looks like you have to... Take this little rubber tube out. It just pokes through. All right, getting closer. Let's see what we have here. Uh, yeah. So I see two more eight millimeter bolts I have to get off. One right there <clears throat> and one on this other side here. Um, which on this other side there is a little electrical wire connected to it. It's probably a ground. Remember, don't lose track of that wire. Let me take that one out. Go ahead and take off the fuel line you know it doesn't look too dirty so far but it doesn't take much to plug up these little carburetors all right now we're gonna have to figure out how to disconnect the linkages here I think I need to move this uh, throttle mechanism <clears throat> in front
looks like there's an electrical component back here on the carburetor that I can get a better look at if I remove this. Yeah, that piece there. That definitely gives us some more room to move this carburetor around. I might be able to get it off the linkages now. So I'll show you. See where the linkage um, connects with this arm? There's a little black clip down there. So I'm just going to move this linkage to where I can get to that little black clip and see how it's held on the, the linkage. You basically just pry it up. So you just want to get something down on this clip and pop it off the linkage. You see that? There it is. And there's also a spring attached right there that you'll want to remove. There you go. Yeah, so I think you just uh, lift it off and turn it. And you can pull it off this other linkage like so. Okay. Now we just have the wires in front to figure out uh, how to disconnect here. So I'm not sure what this component is here. Uh, there's two Phillips heads screws to take it off. Looks like it might be an auto choke unit, but it has a manual choke here on the hand on these wires, so I'm not quite sure what it is. Let's take it off and see what, see what happens. It's just two screws that hold this on. Or at least it appear, appears to be just two screws that hold it on. Alright, let's see what happens here when I try to take this piece off. Hopefully nothing jumps out at me. Oh, okay. So, I get it. That is your fuel solenoid there, or your uh, anti-backfire switch. And it's on a little plunger, you see. And a lot of times those get gummed up. So to test out this plunger here, um, I decided how I could do it was to just turn the key to the first position. And then if I touch this ground wire to the ground here, you'll see. So that plunger is working. So we know the plunger is good. We'll just want to make sure and clean it off as best we can. Looks like we need a uh, Phillips head here. All right. Hopefully nothing jumps out at us. Give it a little wrap. You can feel it coming loose. It's always one. Alright, so the first thing I would expect to find would be a plugged main jet since the engine wouldn't stay running. So let's try and find that main jet. Uh, the inside of the carburetor doesn't look that bad, so that's a good sign. Where do you suppose the main jet is? in carburetor and that's where the fuel solenoid went hmm interesting you know it might be down in, the, in yeah what we got here this little piece come off never seen this setup before and try and be careful here not to break anything. It's 
spinning. Hmm. It's got to pop out of there. Let me get a screwdriver. Well, my buddy Nick bent my screwdriver. Thanks, Nick. But, uh, it should work. Hopefully to pry this out. Yeah, see? It just pries out. Ha-ha! Probably some O-rings in there. There we go. So there, down in there, you can see the main jet. Looks like we're going to need a, a screwdriver that doesn't look like this to take it out. Let's hope we can get this out of here. You don't want to strip it. Oh! I think that was a good sound. Yep. So as I said, I would expect to find this little component plugged. That is the main jet, folks. And if you look, try to get my camera to focus, but uh, if you can see down in there, it is plugged. This little component, folks, the main jet being plugged was the main reason why this engine would not run. All right, as you can see, she's not plugged up anymore. And you'll definitely want to clean off this piece and inspect the O-rings, replace them if necessary. I just use some pipe cleaners here to clean it off. Make sure all the holes are good and clean. And you'll want to clean out all this gunk in there. Now that the uh, float has had a chance to dry off, you can see there's a lot of uh, flaky residue on here. That needs to be removed and cleaned off because you're going to want to clean off uh, all the surfaces inside this carburetor. Looks like our O-ring is still in good shape, so I'm not going to mess with that. I am going to use a little bit of carburetor cleaner in here and probably a toothbrush to scrub out um, all of that and get it as clean as possible. I'm also going to spray some down into the ports just to make sure they're clear, but uh, as I mentioned, the carburetor... Ooh, check that out. Whoa! Dang, that's not good for my camera. I just have a dry toothbrush I'm gonna try and use here. As you can see, it, it works pretty good. I don't have any chemical on this. Just have to use a little bit of elbow grease. So you don't always need carburetor cleaner. Just an old toothbrush. So check it out. I cleaned all that without the use of any carburetor cleaner, just an old toothbrush. So we do want to inspect the float needle. Just, just take out that screw. And then the float comes off with the float needle. And uh, we'll want to clean down inside the hole there with a Q-tip and either replace or clean the float valve there. I'm going to spend a little time cleaning off the float valve here too. And um, if you look at the rubber tip, it still looks like it's in pretty good shape, so we may reuse this. One thing you do need to check with uh, this type of valve is that the little plunger there isn't frozen up. Uh, you'll stick a screwdriver in there and just push it down, make sure that little plunger still is plunging. It's spring activated so it bounces back into place, but you'll want to check that. I have everything really clean now, so uh, I think we're ready to start going back together. You can see every little piece I've cleaned, spotless, oops, all clean inside of there for the most part, as much as I could anyways. So we'll go ahead and put the main jet back in, down in 
in there. Not too tight. You can break things pretty easily. <clears throat> and I spray a little WD-40 in there so I can push this piece back into place. I don't think it matters up or down. Just as long as it gets pushed back into place like that. Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> put the float valve back on the float. And back into place here. Don't forget your hinge pin here. Holds everything in place. And just double check to make sure the clip didn't come off. like we're good time to go back together all right wasn't so bad and tighten them down alternate So, uh, let's get this choke linkage back on here. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Kind of have some bad lighting right now, but... Alright, so we have that linkage on. And let's focus on this part here. Put it together the way you took it apart. Put the linkage down through the little plastic clip and then snap the clip in place. Hopefully you could see that. See the clips in place. Put our spring back on. All right, time to go back together. Don't forget your ground wire here. And I think there's a washer on that one as well. Oh, it looks like before I can bolt that down, I have to mount up that solenoid first much cleaner now so I think we're ready to go back on I believe it went just like that solenoids back on don't forget to put the uh, ground wire in back in place and there's a little washer on this bolt down you noticed I'm reusing these gaskets uh, they're still in good shape so we can reuse them if you want to replace them go ahead that's fine but these ones will work All right, you want to cinch it down pretty good, but not so tight that you break something. So, 
we might be able to test it out like this. Um, yeah, let's try that. I think I'll put uh, the throttle components back in place. Okay, let's let's test out this turd pusher. I'll, I'll put the air filter on it later. Come on, baby. I think we're good. but I think maybe the gentleman just overfilled it with oil. So let's take some oil out and test it out again. So basically uh, all that extra oil came shooting out the muffler and that's what was causing all that smoke and you can see what it did to the side of my van. Better, it's gonna take a while to burn out.